On November 15, 2001, Halo Combat Evolved released alongside the launch of the original Xbox. Master Chief would go on to become the most iconic character Microsoft ever created, and would become synonymous with the Xbox brand. But what if I told you there was a deliberate attempt at making a more family-friendly Xbox mascot before Mr. Halo took all the spotlight? Blinks the Time Sweeper, a game that I fondly remember playing far too many times as a kid, and the saddest part is I never actually beat the game. I would just replay the first few stages over and over again brainlessly. I got this game in a bargain bin when I was around 7, which means the game was already at least 4 years old at that stage. But little me adored it, enough so that I still reference it and talk about it to this day. Sadly I'm convinced Blinks is more known for being the poorly aged things Twitter account profile picture and also the one graphic of him standing there saying, Mario Sonic, prepare for war, Blinks is here. That was from an official Xbox magazine. Kinda yikes on the marketing there. Oh, fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Blinks was created in 2002 by Japanese video game developer Artoon. The game's director was Naoto Oshima, who you may know as the designer of Sonic the Hedgehog, which makes this a little awkward. The game was advertised as quote unquote, the world's first 4D action game. This was due to the main mechanic of the game being time. It was a platformer that integrated time manipulation into its puzzles and platforming challenges. Lynx was equipped with a vacuum cleaner Luigi style, except this one could control time itself. The game's developers alongside Microsoft themselves stated that the time mechanic of the game would not be possible on other consoles, stating that the console's large internal hard drive was necessary for such a game to work. And god damn I believe that. The original Xbox is about five times the size of the PS2. I mean seriously, look at this thing. Pigs steal time. Time sweepers shut down time. Blinks receives a message from a girl. Blinks jumps into doomed world. Blinks kills some time monsters, beats some bosses, meets the shopkeeper, Blinks shopkeeper or 34, and then faces off with the final boss, an amalgamation of time crystals, the princess, and the Tom Tom gang, that like Blinks, has the power to control time, and forces Blinks to fight previous bosses and itself. It's a pretty neat boss fight. B1Q64 doesn't have its time supply cut off, and Blinks returns to his world a hero. But then there's a post credit scene, they MCU'd before the MCU. The princess has some time crystals, and turns time back to before Blinks left to give him a big hug. Then we fade to black. Now that you've met Blinks and heard his incredible story, you must be thinking, that game sounds awesome, why have I never heard of it? Or why was it a failure? Well that's a very interesting question, thanks for asking. Blinks was initially met with quote unquote, mixed or average reviews. It was ranked 6th on GameSpy's most overrated games ever list. Who the fuck made this list? There is just no way this is real. Sure, Blinks got a tiny bit of hype by their own publisher's magazine, but no one was overrating that shit, other than themselves. And why is Halo on the list? Other than that, most reviews I could find gave the game around 6 or 7 out of 10, and said things about it being too difficult for kids, which was seemingly its core demographic, or that it was repetitive and tedious, or that completing a level gave the player a sense of relief rather than joy. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> ah. I hate this game. I don't get it. 
And as for sales, it wasn't looking good for our little friend. The game had sold 156,000 units at the one year point. For scale, Halo Combat Evolved had sold 1 million at the one year mark. And by the end of its run, Blinks the Time Sweeper had only sold 560,000 units, while Halo sold 5.5 million. With all this in mind, why did Blinks get a sequel? Supposedly, they already had plans on making a second game before releasing Blinks, so they probably had a two-game deal or had already started work on it before releasing the first game. And just for a fun fact, Blinks 2 Masters of Time and Space only sold 150,000 units in total, pretty much killing any chance of a future for poor Blinks. Sometimes video games just don't sell very well. Same goes for many other mediums. For example, a movie can be an absolute banger, but bomb at the box office. The Iron Giant had a budget of $50 million, but only made $31 million at the box office. This movie went on to become beloved and a cult classic. That's not to say Blinks ever became a cult classic, or even really beloved by many, but I don't think Blinks' failure makes the game itself a failure. I still think the game is wildly creative and a fun platformer. That being said, I do think there were many things that contributed to the failure of Blinks the Time Sweeper. Firstly, the whole mascot business, and I'm going to be paraphrasing a lot here, so if you're intrigued and want the whole picture, I've linked all my sources down in the description below. Microsoft wanted to expand their presence outside of the United States and gain appeal in the foreign market. This prompted the partnership with multiple video game developers in Japan, but namely Artoon. <laughs> Naoto Oshima then visited Microsoft and suggested the idea of a representative cartoon game for the Xbox, and what I can only assume happened next was the higher-ups saw the man who made Sonic saying this and saw big dollar signs. I gotta do it, man. Ed Fries, the executive producer for Blinks, said that the games they were making in partnership with the Japanese developers were all made to have a Japanese feel to them and launch in Japan first only hoping to later on have a worldwide appeal. So from the get-go, this game already seemed like more of a mascot for the Xbox within Japan, not the console as a whole. But the real kicker is that the Xbox sold only 470,000 consoles in Japan, while the PlayStation 2 sold 24 million. Holy shit! So obviously if Blinks wasn't an exclusive, it had the chance to go crazy. But of course that would defeat the purpose in it being a representative of the Xbox. And it may not have even run on the PlayStation 2, considering they made Blinks with the Xbox's hardware in mind. So they were trying to sell a character to a country that barely bought their console. And back to the mascot thing. Most of the people working on the project didn't seem to think they desperately needed a mascot, or that Blinks had to be said mascot. In an interview with GamesRadar in 2017, Ed Fries goes into a lot of details about the development of the game, and he talks so passionately about this game 15 years later. You can just tell that the game wasn't just some lame attempt at making a soulless face for the company. He states that there were plenty of other games that could have been the mascot character for the company, and that the development team didn't really put that much thought into it at all, and that it was more something other people said about the game. <coughs> there were some other stray bullets that the game caught, like the whole vacuum cleaner concept, the game came out one year after Luigi's Mansion, so of course some people would make the comparison for better or worse, though the game was obviously in development well before they knew anything about Luigi's Mansion. That boy got that virus! In the same Games Radar interview, one of the co-producers for Blink said this, The teams worked well together, and it was a true collaboration. Internally at Microsoft, it showed that it was possible for Japanese and US studios to work together, and that helped pave the way for bigger titles later on. The folks at Artoon are true artists, and really care deeply about their creations. And yeah, I know I may be a bit biased, but I do think Blinks aged quite well. Especially for folks who understand that the first game was meant to be challenging, and really test your gaming skills. And I think this of all things proves that the people working on this game were making a game first and foremost, not some mascot that would be seen as big dollar signs to higher ups. They truly cared about making a game that would push the console to its limits and test the player's skills, rather than just be a walk in the park platformer. Again, I found this game when it was already 4 plus years old, and I fell in love with it. And I think that's all that really matters. Some kid out there was playing this game in awe 
well after its financial lifespan, while others were berating it over being a failure because it didn't meet some money expectations. I'm sure everyone has a Blinks the Time Sweeper of their childhood. A game you remember fondly regardless of its reception. What's yours?